Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India Well, after discussing on the paradigms of uh, environmental human relations, uh, we have uh, discussed the three different forms of paradigms, namely Orientalism, Paternalism and uh, Communalism. Now moving on in this lecture, we would be looking at the relationship, if not uh, the different ontological uh, ideas or the ontology of how nature, culture, uh, magic and science are in a way being uh, understood in the domain of anthropology and uh, which I would call as the sort of epistemological uh, treat in anthropology. And in this, uh, we would be primarily uh, dealing with uh, some of the works of uh, Widing who is a social anthropologist who is based in the University of Bergen and uh, his works are primarily on uh, the environmental knowledge and also uh, which are pretty much related with uh, the areas in the Solomon Islands. Now, in the course of uh, this discussion, I would be citing on the two primary uh, uh, communities or case studies uh, of uh, uh, Evans Pritchard study of witchcraft among the agendas and uh, also among the uh, uh, fishing community or if not uh, among the Solomon Islands. Now, uh, for quite some time this notion of uh, epistemology is guided by uh, the understanding of this western science and uh, as we had discussed in the last lecture, how anthropology in a way was seen to be uh, pretty much an offspring of western colonialism. Now, here it would be interesting to look at how this knowledge in a way, uh, the epistemology of the one on the western science and on the other hand on the native or the local communities tends to evolve and also how this uh, dualism of nature culture which uh, happens to be pretty much demarcated uh, is also uh, in a way operationalized among the native societies, but in a different way. And uh, by saying so, we does not mean that uh, the native societies do not engage in the idea of wild with a with team, but the notion of engagement in that uh, wild and team or the perception and interpretation or the way it is being uh, applied is different from uh, what we normally see from the European Western uh, notion of understanding. Now, also we would also differentiate between what is the emic and ethic perspective or notion of uh, interpreting things. As we had also discussed in the last lecture of how translation, uh, textual translation or translation in general is important uh, because that that is how things operate in we trying to make uh, <clears throat> an understanding of a particular cultural group. Now, uh, let me just to have a brief idea uh, or background of this discussion. I would like to quote from some of the works of uh, Levi Strauss, wherein he says that 
the relationship which normally exists between people and their environment, uh, particularly that is, uh, which is the often presumed universal uh, conceptual dualism of nature and culture. Now, this sort of uh, universalizing or the universal uh, understanding or universal culture in general uh, for quite some time has been pretty much uh, the, the obsession of many anthropologists. And uh, particularly, uh, we tend to judge or evaluate uh, others culture from our understanding that is uh, how it is being guided by the Eurocentric ideas in a way. Now, therefore, it is important to look at the different trends and nuances which involve in the epistemological uh, privileges in the domain in or in the discipline of anthropology. Now, this nature culture dualism if you look at uh, from the uh, western ethno epistemology which uh, I may use uh, in a way derived from a non-universal uh, ontological basis. Now, when we talk about ontology it is also mostly to do with uh, how we deal with uh, the nature of being and uh, or maybe trying to see things from uh, its own natural laws. Now, therefore, if we try to incorporate uh, the concepts such as magic and science in a way if one tries to investigate uh, such concepts with reference to a dualist uses in the anthropological discourse and to wider uh, philosophical debates. Now, therefore, the kind of uh, language which is being used denotes differently to different culture groups and also how we make sense of the environment is not necessarily based on uh, a preconceived or or assumption or presumption rather, uh, because it is mostly with uh, the knowledge which is gained through the practical engagement. Now, that is how this ontology in a way is being developed and, and it evolves in certain kinds of societies. Now, why is there this sort of privileging of uh, epistemological in the, the discipline of anthropology? Now, we would ask a question as to whether or not these uh, western rationalist presuppositions can be taken as representatives of the human universal or can we afford to sort of universalize or generalize any kind of culture or human society for that matter with a with their relations to their environment by simply engaging or dwelling upon the western rationalist presuppositions or whether this western uh, knowledge can be accorded an epistemological privilege uh, positioned in cultural translation. Now, therefore, uh, as we had discussed in the uh, paradigms of uh, uh, more important the orientalism, uh, there is this notion of uh, Eurocentric ideas or biasness in which they tends to you know uh, be guided by that uh, preconceived notions of uh, ideas of dominance over other. So, this predominance over other culture or other human society in a sense is uh, to some extent uh, blurring the boundaries if not uh, within the discipline of anthropology itself. Now, this sort of uh, Cartesian dualism if not what uh, we had discussed talk about the Cartesian anxiety and in a sense other metaphysic characteristic of these western ontological presuppositions have in a way dominated uh, the anthropological analysis uh, mostly which were undertaken uh, during the colonial period and even in the post 
colonial period. Now, this uh, dominant discourse of uh, European culture to sort of engage in the universalizing, uh, we to some extent has also talked about the uh, engagement uh, or using the ideas of taxonomy, classification, categories or in a sense trying to in a way show the dualism of uh, nature and culture as if nature and culture is uh, a separate identity. So, this sort of radical stance which in a way uh, was part of the European culture often in a way tries to uh, you know ignore the others that is uh, uh, the non-European culture ways of structuring the world. Now, therefore, it is important for us to you know uh, also look at uh, uh, contextualize or read in context. So, that uh, this uh, ideas of universal categories uh, can in a way be uh, sort of uh, sidelines. So, in, in some sense that can be an alternative forms of and uh, uh, epistemology. Now, this presumed ideas of uh, dualism of nature and culture, uh, what Wagner in a, a sense argues that although we allow that which I quote, although we allow that other cultures comprise sets of artifacts and images which differ in style from our own. When he say from our own, he is talking about the uh, European culture. We tend to superimpose them on the same reality, nature as we perceive it. So, that sort of uh, superimpositions or if not uh, the attitude of this dominance or rather paternalistic uh, sort of uh, attitude has uh, been uh, evolving for quite some time when uh, other cultures are being studied, if not also how uh, nature is being perceived. Uh, because uh, as, as there is a stringent or uh, a boundaries which is drawn between nature and culture and uh, that, that, that is how this sort of dichotomy is being established between uh, the human and the environment, the kind of relationship which is being shared is rather interpreted in a different sense. Now, therefore, uh, there is no from the uh, Euro Eurocentric uh, stance, there is no such thing as nature or culture and it is a uh, highly rel relativized concept. This again is uh, being uh, stated by Stratton, which of course is uh, widely accredited if not claimed for bringing a new trends in ecological anthropology by using uh, this concept called uh, cultural ecology. Now, uh, Stratton in a way has uh, you know uh, has a different opinions and uh, understanding or perceptions of these uh, ideas of nature and culture. For him, uh, this sort of dualism uh, does not really exist and does not make sense, because what he says is uh, both this notion nature and culture is highly in a way re relative in nature, because uh, it, it, it depends on how one makes sense and interpret from that particular context and situations. So, therefore, this uh, ultimate significance must be sort of understood or derived from its place uh, within a specific metaphysics. So, therefore, it is important to read uh, the text in context rather than uh, uh, sort of uh, engaging in the presumption. So, this sort of stands were in a way uh, pretty much uh, uh, revolving around even among the anthropologists themselves or within anthropology itself. Now, if you take the some of the uh, examples for instance like uh, 
witchcraft, magic, and oracles. Now, uh, witchcraft, uh, for many of you uh, who, who might not be really familiar, in a sense is uh, a witchcraft is something which is uh, being uh, performed in order to cause some kind of uh, you know uh, some ills or rather uh, how people are in a way engaging in uh, creating uh, a, a psychic kind of uh, you know uh, act. So, witchcraft in a way is not something which is not simply a physical trait, but also something which is being inherited. Now, since it is an inherited uh, sort of uh, uh, personality, uh, this practices in a way progress as the body also you know progress. So, by saying so, one becomes uh, sort of uh, pretty robust in that sense, uh, once it evolves from uh, a different stages of life. Now, uh, there, there are certain uh, understanding about an explanation about witchcraft. Now, uh, usually this uh, the death which is normally be being caused by this witchcraft is anyway seen to be you know uh, the primary things is to uh, avenge. So, therefore, among the agendas now uh, people normally engage in uh, uh, sort of consulting the oracles in order to check as to whether they are being uh, affected by this witchcraft or not. Now, and there is this, this sort of rituals or spells sort of magics which are pretty much revolving around in the life of this agendas. Now, uh, uh, these communities the agendas are mostly uh, uh, inhabiting the areas called uh, in, in Africa in the southern mostly concentrated in the southern Sudan and uh, they are pretty much guided by these beliefs or the existence of these mythical powers uh, which exist amongst them and as they believe the, there is the sort of prevalence of uh, these practices and uh, in a way it becomes sort of a part of, of their social world. So, this kind of practices is pretty much rampant uh, among the Jandis uh, communities. Now, if one tries to uh, evaluate if not looked at uh, or the prevalence of these maybe it is witchcraft, magic or maybe the practice of these oracles. Uh, what uh, Ivan Spritz uh, make a statement is that our body of the scientific knowledge and logic are in a way uh, sole arbiters what are mystical common sense and scientific notions. And uh, what he also further at is uh, a context independent reality. So, in a way uh, we might tends to presume from the sci using from the uh, scientific knowledge that it is an independent reality, but then there is sort of interconnections among this because uh, uh, it, it, it cannot uh, happen or exist in isolations. Uh, therefore, this prevalence is pretty much among the uh, social members. Now, Pritchard fathers argue that uh, uh, judged by this criteria of this western science, the witchcraft in a way does not really exist and then and it, it, it sometime appears that to an uh, ethic uh, from an ethic perspective it, it tends to be sort of uh, a rubbish and then uh, it, it, it's, it makes uh, no sense or rather it is nonsensical to believe uh, in the uh, sort of prevalence of this witchcraft. So, despite the observed and recorded facts that uh, this Jandi notions about witches and their doings display a consistent logic all on their own. 
So it is interesting and rather challenging to record and look at the way in which uh, this uh, the existence of witches and how this witchcraft in a way is being operationalized because uh, with the extensive uh, field work uh, preachers has uh, looked at among the Jandis, he in a way has recorded and confirmed the existence of these practices. Now, uh, with Genst and uh, another uh, philosophers who mainly talks in terms of this, the use of logic and language, uh, again uh, tends to see these practices or the existence of these witchcraft among Jandis as something called the language game and uh, uh, which in a way uh, can be you know differentiate or compare with the western science. Now, what he says is each of each set of notions Jandi and this western science scientific are based on the language of games of a given community and cannot be you know really be afford to be judged. Uh, merely based on an independent reality or a meta language. So, it is not really you know adequate to sort of engage with uh, a universalized uh, knowledge or understanding and it is it, it would be in a way ridiculous to even think of uh, generalizing this sort of understanding. Now, therefore, uh, the western scientific logic in a way cannot constitute a context independent truth or a sole arbiter in according to which the Ajandi magical beliefs and practices can be judged. Now, uh, it, it, in some sense uh, this rational explanation of the cause and effect or maybe it might not be uh, really uh, valid enough uh, to how to what extent is magical practices or how it is being effective, but to those who practices it is pretty much uh, a part of the social world and social life that in a way uh, have certain kinds of implications and repercussions among those who practices. Now, way back uh, in the 1950s mostly the anthropological investigations are mostly based on this uh, idea of prefixing this uh, notion of ethno, which in a way is uh, concerned with uh, a kind of a cognitive approach to the natives point of view. Also, with regard to you know specific sub branch of western science. Now, in a way as I use that ethno epistemology. Now, uh, by using this uh, prefix notion of this ethno, you are in a way trying to uh, see the native point of view also by uh, inculcating these uh, ideas of this western science. You, you tend to use the western science to interpret or make sense of this uh, the local knowledge of these uh, native societies. Now, in a way uh, beginning from the 1950s anthropological or anthropologists rather started using like the ethnoscience, uh, ethnobiology, ethnomedicine so on and so forth depending on the kind of uh, branches or uh, knowledge which they want to study by prefixing with ethno they are in a way engaged in exploring, but this again is uh, being translated uh, or treated as a sub branches of western science. Now, this cognitive anthropological study of systems of classification taxonomic structure are found in other cultures. Now, therefore, this classifications of plants, animals so on and so forth have for quite some time been introduced in the field of these anthropological studies. Now, what is this amic and ethic uh, distinction in ethnoscience? If you look at uh, ethnoscience, so in a sense it is pretty much uh, related with the amic side, 
of uh, the amic attic distinctions uh, uh, which, which, which was uh, originally being coined by Pike. Ethno in most cases used to be sort of uh, a prefix names of uh, distinguishing that uh, western epistemology considers to be more of an objective science based on the rigors of hypothetical deductive method. Now, in a way by using this uh, western science, you are engaging in more of a deductive method that is not the internal or the subjective part, but more evaluate or understand from the uh, ethic if not the objective part. So, in a way uh, you can uh, uh, sort of uh, state by uh, looking at more of the objectivist uh, western notion of science. Now, this prefix of uh, using this ethno is indeed uh, likely to sort of uh, indicate a field or of the native knowledge whose status is relative to a canonical counterpart within the non ethno western science. Now, uh, by using this uh, specific uh, prefix ethno, uh, it, it tends to sort of uh, give a sense of uh, native knowledge and but 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 later rather uh, also to be seen as uh, sort of synonymized with the western science now uh, what then is uh, i won't really go into deep details of every uh, concepts which is being uh, used with the prefix ethno because the list goes on like ethnobiology ethnomedicine so and so forth uh, but the one explanations on the one particular topic that is the ethnoecology. Ethnoecology in a way has to do with you know the study of uh, the indigenous knowledge of natural resources and their exploitation which is cited from uh, Allen. And the prefix ethno in a way thus indicates that uh, the specific field of knowledge is that of the observe rather than the observer. So, which means you are in a way uh, trying to uh, interpret things from the native point of view. So, therefore, uh, the use of this ethno in a way somehow justifies or equate uh, the use of this what we know as the western science. Now, we tends to see uh, nature uh, in terms of uh, cultural images. Allen strongly argues by saying that we tend to you know see nature from uh, an objectivized, objectivized or objective uh, notion uh, rather than seeing in terms of the subjective that is the cultural images, the kind of relationship which uh, humans share with uh, nature if not the environment around them, how do they make sense of that. So, that sort of relationship is not being adequately or in depthly being looked at, but rather from only uh, the ethic point of view that is uh, with, which seems to be rather external rather than internal. Now, this western disciplines of ecology as defined by one of its pioneers, uh, the study of arts life support systems, uh, what uh, Odum has said. Whereas, uh, ethnoecology in a sense remains tied to notions of about the natural environment. Now, when you see or uh, looked at ecology uh, uh, and uh, different from ethnoecology, you tend to sort of demarcate uh, sort of uh, the relationship between uh, uh, the notions of human and the natural environment. Now, uh, uh, this cultural meaning, which is pretty much uh, embedded uh, in the 
human natural relationship is seen as something which is interacting with the laws that regulate nature. Now, uh, because this cultural meaning can only be uh, uh, explained uh, in, a, in a more empirical way only when you look at the kind of uh, laws or with nature that is how it operationalizes. Therefore, emphasis in a way is given to studying uh, people cultural maps that is the knowledge, the ideas which evolve around in a particular environment, how they make sense or how they sort of integrate or uh, the kind of uh, relationship which they share to a natural environment whose given are uh, attributes are again defined by a western science. So, this sort of uh, uh, cultural meaning which in a way is looking at the laws of this how it regulates with nature has to be uh, sort of uh, in a way I would not say debunked, but then uh, we need to sort of come out of this uh, obsession. Now, uh, if you look at uh, Ivan Spritzard's understanding or explanation of the uh, practices of Azandis witchcraft. Uh, from the ethno-ecological point of view is in a way likely to sort of presuppose the existence of uh, a context independent reality against which the rationality of indigenous ecological knowledge may be evaluated. So, therefore, uh, the notion such as uh, truths which is established by or facts which is established by western uh, biological and ecological science uh, in a sense retain this epistemological uh, privilege. Now, therefore, uh, one should not be uh, obsessed or defined or directed by this uh, western science when one evaluate any form of knowledge may it be the agenda witchcraft or something else because it has to be uh, uh, sort of seen's, seen in the perspective of uh, its independent reality, but not guided by a certain kinds of prefix if not uh, presumption. Now, uh, moving on, now we need to you know uh, proce proceed from this ontological constructs that is in which uh, this dualism of nature and culture dominates, uh, because uh, this is what uh, normally uh, is being seen and uh, the ideas which is conceived by many uh, western anthropologists or maybe the environmental orientalist in a sense. This conventional study of ethnoecology in a way tends to imply that uh, a subjective grid of culture is imposed upon the objective reality of nature. So, this sort of uh, imposition of this objective reality or the kind of uh, ontological uh, ontology of this nature has to be sort of uh, understood. So, that how we move on fr from this ontological constructs of that is the existence of this dualism of nature and culture in a way is uh, in a way dominating the disciplines of this anthropology. Now, uh, if you see from the perspective of uh, uh, a methods like for instance, uh, which in a way uh, looked at talks about the validity and then the applicability and also how uh, in a way is being proven. Methodologically speaking, uh, this approaches that is uh, in a way generates much information on uh, taxonomic representation that is the classifications of plants and animals, but less on the environmental processes and also the relations as perceived by the people in questions. The subject which we normally study in a way is being missed out. 
So, when you sort of your focus is more on the uh, taxonomic representations, you tends to ignore or maybe turn a deaf ear to uh, sort of the way things which uh, is being structured around that is the environmental process and relations, because you tends to miss out. So, in a way you can say that uh, uh, you miss the trees for the woods. So, so therefore, if one is guided by you know uh, investigating or looking only at particular things, you tends to miss out the whole structure and then the kind of uh, relations which exist in this environmental processes. Now, therefore, uh, one cannot afford to single out a particular uh, epistemology of the native people, because those knowledge again is interrelated. Now, uh, therefore, uh, it, it should not be seen from the perspective of just only a predator and a prey but rather it should be seen uh, from the point of how uh, an individual tries to make sense or tries to look at the interrelations which exist uh, among the communities where one uh, you know tends to you know like study. Now, since those processes in a way be being uh, judged or understood from a priori by the anthropologists by uh, looking at the uh, using the gates of this western scientific knowledge uh, about the reality of nature, they tends to miss out certain uh, you know important indicators uh, as, as I pointed out the uh, environmental process and relations which is more to be seen from the holistic approaches. Now, uh, if, if one is being again obsessed and guided by this western scientific knowledge uh, about reality of nature, because that, that sort of uh, relations which is shared between uh, the human and environmental relations is again missed out. Now, does uh, the studies which normally uh, is about the ecological knowledge of many indigenous societies normally emphasizes on the taxonomic if not the categories and criteria for classification again uh, do not correspond to those of western science because it is sometimes difficult to you know uh, categorize and classify this indigenous ecological knowledge because oftentimes it cannot be documented and and one cannot really explain as in the case of the formal knowledge of the western science as uh, A is the cause of B or vice versa or maybe rather uh, I, I from the indigenous ecological knowledge it is more to be seen in terms of uh, A is seen to be in relation to B and vice versa. Remember we had talked about uh, these ideas of these protection and reciprocity when we talk about the human environmental relations uh, mostly which is operationalized among the hunting and gathering societies. So, therefore, there is no scope or one cannot really afford to clearly distinguish uh, between uh, nature and culture or rather the existence of this dualism and in nature and culture is something which we cannot uh, afford to explain in the context of uh, the indigenous communities. So, therefore, uh, it, it, it does not really correspond to those of the western science and that this indigenous perceptions of ecological linkages are not consistent with western postulates of causality. So, as I said one cannot afford to uh, be engaged on this causal explanation of uh, this uh, knowledge is unlike the western science. Now, therefore, uh, Berlin uh, who is the founder of this ethnobiology has uh, argued that this widespread uh, regularities in terms of this classification and uh, 
uh, naming of animals and plants among uh, these uh, the aboriginals or these native societies reflect uh, similarities in people's largely unconscious appreciation of nature's basic plant. Now, therefore, uh, as I had also talked about uh, the prevalence of this totem, wherein the a plant animal or so and so are in a way being named or uh, classified uh, wherein it also represent the symbols of that particular community and therefore, it is seen as sacred. So, this sort of uh, a particular animal used as a totem of the community again cannot be you know uh, be sort of seen from the uh, western postulates on causality or uh, one cannot really uh, engage in classification and naming unlike what the biologist and so on and so forth does. Now, this sort of uh, looking at uh, this plants mostly uh, that is the taxonomy of what normally the ecologists and the biologists are engaged into. Therefore, among these non-literate societies, uh, this naming and classification in a way reflects uh, certain kinds of largely the unconscious appreciation of nature's basic plants among the uh, people who are uh, alien if not outside that particular society. Now, therefore, why do we talk about uh, privileging of epistemology in anthropology? Because this privileging of this natural laws or phenomena and domains that are not in nature that is according to science or this western uh, ontology may well be uh, sort of precluded from having a real explanatory value in the analysis of these cultural ecological relations. Now, therefore, this the sort of uh, rational explanation might not be possible in terms of uh, how it is being operationalized among the indigenous ecological knowledge as it is uh, in practice in terms of the western ontology. Now, thus this sort of uh, uh, the practice of this taxonomy categories naming classifications and what not the change of these implications and causal linkages as perceived locally may be sometime uh, or often times misrepresented by the anthropological observer, which sometimes uh, also lead to inadequate levels of contextualizations. So, therefore, uh, even when the, the anthropologists no doubt spend uh, a number of time and then the, it can be months, years to in studying a different uh, cultural group. Uh, often times if they are being guided by this western scientific uh, uh, ontology, uh, they might chances are there that they might still uh, missed out certain things and uh, uh, those things in a way can lead to uh, an inadequate levels of uh, contextualizations. Now, uh, one cannot really rule out this privileging of natural laws or maybe the kind of biasness which normally is being shown by the visitor uh, or the observer on the observe or this the host communities. Now, therefore, a patent uh, order or a universal in this classification in a way tends to obscure certain facts or truths which are embedded uh, in that uh, context. So, so, now without any one type of this environment, so considerable cultural variation which has to be recognized. So, one needs to recognize that under one uh, environmental setting or one type of uh, environment, there are n numbers of uh, sort of cultural variations 
the kind of understanding or maybe the kind of uh, name which is being given to a particular plant might also denote something else. So, it is important to look at uh, the kind of uh, metaphors, uh, the textual language which is being used as uh, rightly pointed out by the by with Genstein. Now, therefore, one needs to have uh, a closer observation uh, that is uh, in to the practice in which humans engage with the uh, environment that is the relationship which they which they share. Therefore, one needs to have a closer examination rather than simply uh, engaging from uh, a positivist pursuit of these cognitive models mainly of the taxonomic representations. If we happens to do, do so that is uh, by uh, pursuing from a positivist if not uh, a western science uh, orientation, we may tend to you know uh, lead uh, the way into an expanded approach to a more of cultural ecology and a reversal to the long running neglect of ethnobiology by the mainstream anthropologist. Now, this is what Alliance has argued and therefore, one needs to have a closer attention rather than simply engaging in uh, these ideas of uh, positivist notions of understanding, which otherwise may lead to you know uh, uh, different kinds of uh, the neglect of these details of ethnobiology. Now, what could perhaps be the alternative of this epistemologies not necessarily which is guided by uh, uh, the western positivist or uh, uh, the western epistemology. Now, what is the because uh, it is important for at this point for us to locate uh, the epistemologies of the uh, native people or the local knowledge. Now, uh, uh, Weeding has uh, made an, uh, an extensive study among the, uh, the Solomon Island as I pointed out uh, among the <coughs> Marowa Lagoon, which is located in the New Georgia area in the western province. Now, uh, this place is again uh, an ecologically diverse uh, environment uh, and uh, people are more or less relying on their daily engagement with uh, the sea environment. That is, they are more or less dependent for the subsistence uh, on this uh, environment. Uh, people in a way tends to you know uh, relate more to the environment of sea that is the coral reef and also the rainforest in which they depend for the material and spiritual sustenance. Now, when we talk about uh, the material we are in a way trying to again uh, see the dichotomy of uh, nature and culture, but over here it is something different because it, it tends to look at how they are dependent on this environment not just for the material aspect, but also for the spiritual sustenance. Now, uh, uh, in, 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 in this uh, Marowa Lagoon, uh, they are more, more, more or less being inhabited by around like uh, 10,000 uh, in, in population and mostly their household productions are primarily centered on shifting cultivation or Sweden agriculture of uh, food uh, root crops mainly uh, they plant the sweet potatoes and also they engage in collecting this coral reef and lagoon fishing and every s uh, small amount of uh, different vari variation in terms of the case uh, pursuit that is in terms of uh, uh, engaging in different kinds of trading and so on and so forth. Now, if you look at this uh, the Meravu uh, lagoon, now it, it is important to uh, again contextualize from the ontological premises that the organism uh, 
relationship with these non-living components of the environment is again subsumed in the concept of uh, in the local term known as power which is to be seen as the uh, relationship of this land sea and the territory. So, this in a way does not constitute a distinct realm or territory of nature or natural environment separate from cultural and human society. Rather, there is this sort of interrelationship or uh, the kind of relations which they share is to be seen uh, in relationship with something else. Now, for instance, the reefs, sea and forest and the living things therein are not viewed by these the Marawo peoples as an environment of neutral objects or maybe seen from the ontology of uh, maybe uh, natural laws or something else. Now, as I had uh, in the beginning uh, in the introduction pointed out that uh, there is of course, these ideas of this violent theme uh, dimensions which is operationalized among the Marawa people, but in a different way. This concept again is uh, a matter of uh, degree and function, which is seen to be so, sort of uh, in relationship rather than uh, a binary oppositions that is uh, a dualism or something which is uh, a radical distinction is made, but rather it is seen in terms of uh, an analogic code that is they are related rather than contrasted and also they do not constitute an equivalent to a nature culture dichotomy. Now, uh, which we had also in the previous lectures talks about uh, where Stratton again uh, uh, looks into the Cree peoples, uh, uh, sorry in the New Guinea highland, uh, how the sort of relationship of uh, is operationalized. Now, according to this Maravos epistemology, it sort of illuminates some kind of uh, a fundamental processual and hypothesizing uh, attributes that is their beliefs and uh, knowledge with regard to the environment, because it is in a way interesting to see how this sort of knowledge developed or in a way it is being inherited. Now, uh, this notion of uh, understanding or uh, in this notion of this construction uh, again is uh, validated, transmitted and it is more of a practical knowledge that is about the environment which again pose a number of challenges for the anthropologists to make sense or to make an analysis. Uh, forget about the kind of uh, jargons metaphors which is embedded uh, among the locals when they sort of tries to relate with uh, any kind of. Now, if one has to you know engage in this uh, the construction validation transmission so and so forth it will be sometime you know like uh, impracticable for any uh, uh, rational explanation for any anthropologist. Now, for instance, uh, the Marawo people do not simply act in the environment from a dichotomy between their culture and a nature as if they are engaged in exploitation by them through means afforded by that culture that is something again which is guiding their ontological precepts. So, they tend to make sense of uh, you know uh, sort of the kind of uh, relations between them. So, any kind of practices, any kind of act is not to be seen as something uh, as a mere act to satisfy one's individual need, but also in relation to uh, other relations which exist in that environment. Now, therefore, nature cannot be simply seen as 
an analytical category or uh, a separate entity, uh, but th this might be something which is uh, prevalent in the western notions of understanding, because we, we tend to uh, sort of engage in the bringing a uh, particular analytical category, but which is not the case uh, among the mirror of people. If you take the for example, nature as a subject, they behave rather analytically in their encounters with the environment, but from a position of a practical knowledge. Now, therefore, this sort of uh, uh, a continuous or processual understanding is something which is uh, constructed over time by validating and also it is being transmitted, because uh, those are more or less based on a practical knowledge uh, rather than something uh, which is uh, supposedly learned from an objective point of view. Now, in this process well the hypothesizing epistemology uh, that also perhaps prevails in among the Marawos, there are uh, again several successive stages, states which apply to the acquisition and validation of knowledge uh, which they call inate. Now, from hearing about something and a state of knowing is obtained. Now, therefore, it is more or less being guided by the trial and error kind of uh, practices or rather it is a practical knowledge. Now, therefore, uh, they normally engage in the validation of knowledge that is not simply based on uh, hearing, but also uh, it is about obtaining that particular knowledge. Now, normally uh, people are tend uh, to be guided by this previous and the subsequent knowledge as well as the social context of knowledge transmission determines whether or not this knowing entails believing. So, even when uh, this knowledge are something which is being passed on from the previous generations or their ancestors, they in a way validate all this understanding by practically doing it. Now, uh, which in a way is uh, they en en enter this uh, engage with sort of a repeated verifying instances of seeing for oneself that is they in a way testify and validate and through this validation they tends to you know transform in it into trusting which in a way is literally to be convinced of efficacy and the state of being wise. Now, uh, another example the, from this uh, environment is that the human presence in a potentially dangerous environment may serve to illustrate this rational epistemological processes and mutualist ontological premises. Now, therefore, it is sort of uh, a knowledge which is being in transmission and secondly, which again entails some kind of believing and literally, uh, which in a way uh, is imbued with a truth and through this uh, that uh, it is being verified and after that, that trust is being established. So, it is something uh, a knowledge which is not just being produced overnight, but it is processual in nature. So, it is uh, rather an on ongoing process. So, therefore, in a way the uh, Marawo people's epistemological knowledge is uh, a process and which is mutualist uh, in nature. Now, for instance, uh, I will cite uh, an example which is being given by Bidding, wherein the people are normally uh, also being uh, killed by the uh, sharks, the man eating sharks. 
and uh, when one look closely, uh, it, it, it would be rather uh, pertinent to ask a question if the Marao people are in a way pretty much sharing that kind of close relationship with the environment. Why is it that uh, that, that, that sort of killing takes place or the sharks in a way engage in killing those people. Now, even within them, there are people who are you know subscribing to these what we call as this totemic relationship that is which they sort of share some kind of uh, uh, affinity with the sharks that is solely those who eat man. Now, this sort of practices of the shark totemism is again uh, being limited to only a number of uh, people who are localized that is the butu butu of the morale that is through these uh, practices of this totem, uh, totemic uh, or sub totemism. They also uh, in their social life they engage in sort of entailing a prohibition against harming provoking killing most of old eating sharks is only associated uh, with by a practice by only a limited number. Now, again now uh, if you look at this uh, the attacks of sharks on the, the people the sharks tend mainly attack people from this the non totemist group again the or, or mostly who are the land oriented groups who are mostly practicing those shifting cultivations whose primarily engagement is in the land and not in the environment of sea is regarded by this Maravos fishermen as a validation of their belief uh, that uh, ancestrally imposed respect shown to Sirk will in return give protection from attacks in the present. Now, this sort of uh, sub totemism, which is being uh, uh, pr culturally practiced by these people, they are being guided by that trust that if they engage in a certain kind of uh, taboos that is not uh, entailing in, uh, like harming and provoking or even killing, the shark is not going to harm them. So, this sort of trust uh, is being established and is also being proven true because it is validated. Now, therefore, as they sort of uh, this ancestral belief uh, uh, is in a way being operationalized or happens to be sort of uh, being uh, proven truth in the epistemology of this Marao people. Now, therefore, it is pretty much evident that only sub some section of people like who are engaged in shark totemism is being spared by the shark because uh, they, they tend to see the shark as not something as uh, a killer, but rather as seen as uh, who will in return give a protection from uh, the attacks of other entities. Now, therefore, this sort of mutual relations which in a way uh, is uh, sort of operationalized. Now, from an ethic understanding or maybe from an objectivist uh, analysis of these uh, practices again, uh, one might uh, simply you know uh, give an observation by saying that uh, maybe the situation you know compelled someone to be killed or by this shark, but which again is not true because uh, only in few instances wherein those communities who do not uh, really subscribe to the shark totemist or totemism are being killed or maybe the land oriented groups, but those who practices this ancestrally imposed respect which, which in a way is being uh, practices by some group are being spared and then not harmed by this shark. Now, uh, this uh, such kind of ancestrally derived belief in the efficacy of shark totemism and believing in the idea becomes sort of convinced and elevates it to the level of trusting. 
Now, this sort of trust, the mutual trust between the animal, um, the human and the shark, in a way, is something again which is uh, normally the belief which is being handed down from the past generations. Therefore, such mutualist ideas about the relationship between people and the surrounding environment of sea, land and beyond in a way permeates a great many fields of activity and uh, concern among the Marawo people. Now, in a way by citing an example of these instances of the sharks uh, sometime uh, engaging in killing the people and sparing people who practice this shark totemism. We can in a way say that uh, this Marawo's people's relationship with the environment also involve some kind of uh, manipulations uh, that is through often standardized or widely known acts of interventions. That should uh, what Evans Pritchard also when he talk about the agendas uh, communities that this kind of uh, uh, epistemological privilege of science be seen as belonging to a category of magic. Now, therefore, this act uh, in a way this uh, is particularly integral to the Marawos people's practical engagement with their environment uh, of their own perception of constraints posed by the environment on human activity. Now, therefore, uh, we cannot really ru rule out the idea of this taming the wild or tame and wild uh, sort of interrelations also is operationalized. Now, by saying so, we can say that thus Marawa's people's relationship with the environment appear to be not necessarily constrained by the laws of nature and uh, the efficacy of this uh, the practical knowledge to overcome what would in western scientific terms be considered as natural constraints is verified regularly by uh, these practices. Now, uh, moving on we can in a way say that these uh, puzzling dualities which exist uh, in the practice of this say magic as a technical act, but also or which is socially in nature as uh, something which is negative or bad signs, uh, which is being classified by Tyler, Fraser and even Spreesat. Again is uh, a rhetorical act, uh, uh, which is said by Malinowski. According to Tambia made an observation of all this by saying that all this in a way will disappear only when we succeed in embedding magic in a more ample theory of uh, human life in which the part of this ritual action, action is seen as an indispensable man uh, made for man uh, anywhere and everywhere of relating to and participating in the life of the world. Now, therefore, it is important to not simply you know make a presumptions or uh, sort of uh, a con simplistic conclusion. Rather, we have to in a way uh, be able to be a participatory in these uh, practices. Now, what we have discussed so far is on the kind of uh, uh, relationship between nature, science, magic uh, and how the epistemologies which happens to in a way privilege uh, uh, anthropology uh, at one point uh, of time has evolved and the kind of stances anthropologies also takes has to change. So, the alternative way of an epistemology is again to lo locate and understand the local knowledge, the kind of how their knowledge has uh, evolved over a period of time. That is uh, the ontological sense uh, of knowing uh, of how they tends to uh, sort of make sense of the by utilizing certain kind of concepts and ideas. So, therefore, the idea is to come with an alternative uh, that is to 
innately or maxims uh, of the epistemology of the native people. So, we have uh, cited an example of the witchcraft which is being practices uh, among the agendas and mostly also the kind of uh, totemic practices among the uh, Maravo people in Solomon Island, how this knowledge is processual in nature and then the ontology which they have developed in a way can be sort of uh, uh, serve our purpose in understanding trying to look at uh, the relationship between nature, culture, science, uh, magic so and so forth. So, for further understanding you can refer these uh, readings of even Spritzert and readings understanding of the Marawa Lagund. Now, with this I will stop this lecture. Thank you.